Well, <coughs> welcome to part three in my adventures in nickel plating. And this episode is not quite the one I had planned. <coughs> At the end of part two, I said I was planning on attempting to nickel plate something much larger, like a hand tool, and I am going definitely going to do that. But I was in the pub the other night and I, had a, I was just thinking about these videos. I always have all my best thoughts in the pub. <coughs> not really sure why, but you know. <laughs> anyway. It suddenly occurred to me, not everyone has a bench power supply. Now I muck around with electronics, I've got a couple of these cheap Chinese bench power supplies and they're brilliant, but obviously not everyone's going to have one of those. So supposing you wanted to do this and you didn't have one of those. So let's get rid of that, as nice as it is. So there must be alternatives. <laughs> for doing this without using a bench power supply. And there are, and this is one of the first ones. This is an old mobile phone charger. I have no idea what phone that charged. It just says made in China. But this one outputs five volts, 1.5 amps. That's a little bit higher than our four and a half volts, but Certainly one and a half amps is more than enough because most of the time we only saw, I think the maximum we saw was about 0.4 of an amp when we were actually doing the nickel plating. And that should work absolutely fine. Now, obviously you do need to make sure you, you know which lead is pos and which lead is neg. And of course the one mobile phone charger that I would pick actually has black and red leads. Most of them don't. So you need to use a multimeter to determine which is pos and which is neg because you have to connect the neg the negative lead to whatever you want to nickel plate. So that's one solution. And this is another. This is a, as you can quite clearly see, this is a little battery pack that holds three AA batteries. They're one and a half volts each. So that should give us four and a half volts. So that is another solution. And we're gonna try both of those and see, see, if they, see if they actually work. Obviously, batteries, alkali batteries like that, they have a limited lifespan and they'll probably be okay for doing small items. These are gonna be our test pieces. These, this is a, a half a cartridge case and that's just an old cylinder for a model steam engine. So yeah, for doing small stuff like that, I'm sure this would be fine. But for, for anything that, you know, draws a reasonable amount of current when it's nickel plating, this is not gonna last long. This on the other hand, obviously being a main supply, yeah, it will keep going forever. So we're gonna try those and see, see how it works. Now, okay, I know what you're all saying. That's fine for doing the nickel plating. But when I created the nickel plating solution, I had the power supply turned up to 24 volts and it was drawing a lot of current. I think it was over uh, four amps was about the most we saw when it, when it was working. Now that voltage isn't critical. <clears throat> Obviously the high voltage speeds up the process. And as you know, it took me two hours to create this tub of uh, nickel plating solution. But again, you don't need a bench power supply to do that. One, uh, an ideal source would be an old laptop power supply, which is what we have here. This is a Lenovo power supply for a ThinkPad. Um, this one is 20 volts at three and a quarter amps. Um, the beauty with the older laptop supplies is they tend to be uh, reasonably powerful. They will deliver quite a lot of current, which is what you want. This is probably a little bit short, but you can get them four and a half amp, five amp power supplies for laptops. And the voltage varies dramatically, but um, 20 volts was not uncommon. A lot of the Sony laptops were like 21 volts. Um, so yeah, if you've an old laptop power supply, uh, again, you don't need to worry about the polarity. You can just chop the original plug off and bear the wires off because when you've got two um, plates in, in the solution, uh, it doesn't matter which polarity they are for creating the solution. So yeah, an old laptop power supply would work well for creating the solution in the first place. Okay, let's get on and uh, we'll try the uh, battery pack first and see how that goes. Turns out this battery pack is a little bit on the dodgy side and actually works much better when you give it a bit of a squeeze. So we're all set up, ready to go, and I'll bring you in closer so you can actually see what's going on in the solution. Okay, here we go.
Yeah, I think you can see that that's, uh, that's bubbling away nicely. It's coming a bit closer. That's not quite as vigorous bubbling as we got with the previous um, brass that we did using the power, bench power supply, but it's working. It's well, definitely working. We'll leave it in there for a minute or so. I mean, again, this is just to prove that you can do this without using a bench supply. This is the whole point of this. Uh, I don't think that batteries are the ideal solution, but if you've got something small you want to plate, I think that would work fine. Yeah, look, there's a there's a coating of uh, nickel on there already. It's bubbling away quite nicely, actually, isn't it? And again, I did warm the solution up before I started doing this. It's not cold. Oh, I think that'll do. Let's uh, take it out and uh, have a close look at it. Well, I reckon that's a pretty good coating there. It's all round. Again, I only put it sort of like two thirds of the way in so you can see the line between the brass and the nickel. But uh, so there you go. Obviously, AA batteries, they work just fine. Like I said, they will have a limited capacity because obviously as, as we draw current out of them, they go go flat. But um, for certainly for small items like this, the, it works absolutely fine. Um, right, let's try the uh, old mobile phone power supply. Now, as I said, the mobile phone power supply is 5 volts, which is not uncommon. Quite a, quite a lot of mobile phones are, are, are 5 volts. So it's slightly higher than the 4.5, but I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference. So we'll... Uh, Stick it in and see what happens. Oh yeah, we're bubbling away quite nicely. Quite, it's a bit more vigorous than it was with the with the AA batteries, AA batteries. But I'm not really entirely surprised at that. So we've got a slightly higher voltage. So yeah. let me close in on that so you can have a better look. I mean, the important point about this is that, you know, this works fine. They both do. But I, th I think, you know, first of all, there are millions of mobile phone chargers out there, old ones. You can pick them up off eBay for next to nothing. Uh, you probably find them at your local tip. Uh, and it obviously works, uh, you know, absolutely fine. Um, and it should be okay for larger objects too. I mean, that 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 phone charger was rated at 1.5 amps, which is we're not drawing anything like that. Uh, if you remember when we were doing the brass, it was about I think 0.4 of an amp. So uh, yeah, that should be fine for for a lot for a larger object, you know. So uh, it's bubbling away quite nicely. Um, and if you're wondering why I'm using brass, I just picked this for the specific reason that you get a lovely contrast between the unplated brass and the plated brass. It's not, it's not quite so obvious on other metals which are a similar colour to nickel, so brass is good for the demonstration purposes. Yeah, it's coming along lovely. Let's leave it in there for a little bit longer. Right, I'll pull that out and we'll have a look at it. Well, there you go, the mobile phone power supply. Let's have a look, shall we? Well, I think you can see that, that uh, it did a it did a nice job on that. Now, I didn't polish these up to a high level of uh, shine, so obviously it's it's a it's a little bit dull the nickel plate, but. You know, that's we, we determined that in previous episodes where it's the, the, the amount of polish you put into the surface before you plate it will uh, determine whether or not you get a really, really bright, shiny nickel plate or just a dull nickel plate like this. But you can clearly see the difference. There's the brass at the top there where, I was, where the crock clip was attached and then there's the nickel there. So the mobile phone charger w also works fine. So there you go. Two alternative versions of providing electricity for doing the nickel plating process. Um, 
obviously the, the bench supply is much better because um, you know you can set the voltage to exactly what you want it's got oodles of current so you know but if you don't have that I can thoroughly recommend the old mobile phone chargers, cheap as chips and will do the job perfectly. You need to make sure that it's a five volt one, not, not, you know, not a higher voltage, but you know, five, five volt one works absolutely fine as do the three AAA batteries, but obviously they're not going to last very long if you've got a lot of plating to do. So yeah, that all works fine. On the subject of making, making the solution, <clears throat> as I stated, an old laptop power supply, as long as it provides enough current, you have to check. Most of them have that on the label. It will tell you what current it pushes out. Um, and obviously a nice high voltage would be ideal. 20 volts was the one I showed you, but you can get them higher than that. While I've been doing this, I, it also occurred to me that you could probably use a battery on the solution created in front. Now, I, I don't know an awful lot about uh, <coughs> um, lithium ion batteries, so I don't tend to use those very much, but I do use a lot of lithium lithium polymer batteries, LiPos, and they do a 22 volt uh, battery, and you can get those in quite high current ratings. Now, the only disadvantage with those is they're expensive and you need a proper charger for them, but it is an, an alternative. I'm sure one of those would do fine to create the solution in the first place. But um, yeah, so there you go. You don't need a lot of expense to do this even to create the solution it can be done reasonably cheaply and then once you've got your solution the actual plating can be done reasonably cheaply as i've demonstrated here with these two alternative voltage sources so right that concludes <laughs> adventures in nickel plating part three and hopefully in part four uh, we'll be doing a much larger object and we'll see how that works out but uh, as always i hope you found this useful um, thanks very much for watching Cheers.